Hey, what's up everybody? So I'm back to Unreal Engine again this weekend. Uh, the new 5.1 version is out and has quite a few improvements that I'm pretty excited about. I'm going to talk about one uh, specifically for the sequencer that I am super excited about and I've already uh, found myself saving quite a bit of time. Um, I'm working on a new little project here. This is uh, just sort of some, an exercise. Uh, Kitbash 3D has put out a new a free kit for Mission to Minerva and uh, they're inviting people to create you know, um, uh, images or videos or whatever using the, this free kit. It's got some pretty good stuff in it, so everybody should grab that for free. I'll put a link in the description. Um, and I, I probably will submit this, but it's really more of just a practice. Uh, there's already quite a few out there that are that are really good. Uh, I'm just trying to uh, mostly work on dynamic range, trying to make things look a little more cinematic instead of more like a video game cutscene. Kind of difficult, but I think I'm getting there slowly. Um, so anyway, this is uh, my current project, and I just, I'm just making a simple little video where, um, or a clip, maybe like an intro clip or something. This would be, um, you know, that kind of shows the base and then uh, pans over here to uh, this worker that's going to be tapping some things out on the screen and working on an animation for this guy, as opposed to just the the uh, idle animation that you see that he's using here. So he'll reach up and you know press a couple of buttons on the screen and I'll probably will change this to be a custom video uh, but everything you see here is from the Kitbash 3D free kit uh, except for the rocks and the landscape uh, these are all from Quixel, Quixel mega scans I believe they are and uh, I've got quite a bit more work to do on filling out the environment to make it believable you know like there's still some gaps in through here that I need to fill some things in but with this, you know, I started out the way that I always do. I, I put a couple of things in the frame and I set my camera up and then I kind of get an idea of how, the camera motion that I want and I just start to build things around. And uh, let's see, let's see if I can easily shift over. Yeah. So as you can see, I did not bother. Um, there we go. I didn't bother building anything else other than what's going to be seen. Um, and like I said, I still need to fill in a little bit under the ship and some other little places. But, um, you know, it doesn't take a whole lot to, to build a scene. Uh, and this, you know, doesn't look very realistic uh, from this high up, obviously. But from down low in the camera angle, it's not bad. And you see I've got a couple of ships up in the air uh, just to kind of show some things there. Um, but let's see, I put a couple of other people over here doing some things. They need to have some motion, some animations. This guy's going to be working on something here. This guy's probably going to walk out of this little thing and just kind of walk out into the light. Uh, these guys are going to be probably walking down. Maybe they're going to be pushing something. Um, but as you can see, these assets are, are great for free. Um, I think that once I add some some decals to this and add some more atmosphere, uh, it'll be become a little bit more believable, um, and not quite video game looking. Um, let's talk about my favorite thing so far in 5.1 that I have experienced. Um, used to be that if you wanted to set keyframes in the sequencer, you would have to, um, you know, set your keyframe here and set your keyframe there. And let's see, what is this? Uh, this is um, okay. So this is one of the solar panels here that's moving. So this little thing right here. Um, as the camera pans around, it starts to spin around to try to find the sun. And then the other one behind it does the same thing. So as you can see, there's, I have a start here and an ending here, and I'm changing the yaw of this so that it rotates as the camera is panning across. Just to kind of show some movement, you know, in addition to the camera movement, to show that this is a real world and it's active and it's, some things are going on. Um, so as I change the camera angle a little bit, they kind of happen a little bit early. Like I'd kind of rather them happen like right here instead. And so before I would have to select both of these and I would have to move them and maybe potentially move some other things around. If I had multiple key points in this, I may have to do some more adjustment. But now it's as simple as I can grab this thing right here and this is the entire uh, keyframe segment. And so I can just move it, you know, maybe to here. Uh, I can move this other one to here maybe, let's see, I can even grab it and stretch it and you can see it moves this other keyframe. So 
humongous time saver here for me. And so now as you see as it pans through, there's a little more motion as they're in the center of the screen before they go out of focus there. Um, and uh, let's see, another thing, I'm automating that focus here with the post-process volume, um, with the focal distance setting. Um, I wasn't really able to get this to work with the work by itself with the uh, focal distance on the camera lens. So I had to also add in um, this. This is probably something that most of you already know, but it was kind of new to me. I had to use both of them in conjunction to be able to get this uh, depth of field effect. But as you can see, it starts here on the ship uh, and, you know, it's, uh, you know, raising its engines up. I want to have a little bit of steam and some um, turbulent displacement. Uh, <laughs> going on here for all of this. Still working on how to do that uh, with Unreal Engine. Have some more motion, have some more um, um, steam, some other things, some more just atmosphere dust or something maybe going on here to make it a little more believable. As it pans through, um, let's see, like right here, I've got the focal distance to where it's now on this worker. And so as you see, he becomes in focus along with the screen. And so this is with the main focal point of, of the rest of the, the little video clip. Uh, like I said, he's going to reach up and press a couple of buttons. And you see this looks pretty nice back here, this kind of blur. Um, some of this is a little odd. I think it's because of the bloom settings that I have in the post-process volume. I need to uh, go through and adjust that out a little bit more. Um, but all in all, I think it's it's coming along pretty pretty well. Um, I really just kind of wanted to show off this new thing uh, in 5.1 of these uh, keyframe ranges, segments. I don't know, whatever they call that. Call that. Um, but anyway, I'll learn more things about 5.1 and I'll make some more videos. So um, if you have any questions about this, make sure you leave any questions or comments uh, in the um, comments section. Uh, that's what that's for, I suppose. And I'll leave some links in the description uh, how to get this free kit. And uh, guys, go make something cool out of all this. Thanks.